sleeping bot. You up? Are you listening? In this episode of the Pro Power Skating, we're going to be answering Sleeping Bob's question about how to tie your hockey skates. Hey guys, Coach Ryan here with DePra Power Skating. Thanks for coming back for another episode. This is actually one of the first times I'm gonna answer a comment question down below. This one's for you, Sleeping Bob. I hope you're not sleeping for this one. So in this video, Hockey Speed Tips, good old Sleeping Bob writes, Hey Ryan, can you maybe do a video where you can show us how to tie your skates for the best skating experience. I just want to know how tight should it be at the different areas of the skate. And I often have the feeling it's not tight enough or it's too tight, so I didn't feel my feet after 15 minutes. Thanks. Okay, so to answer his question, it's actually going to be twofold, right? It's going to be performance and feel because ultimately, that's what you want to be a great skater, to feel your edges, and to make sure that your boot is performing how it should be out on the ice. And the longer you play, the more in tune you are with every piece of equipment, how you want it to fit, and how you want it to feel. Now, performance is also more with the kind of product that you're using, the company you're going with, the style of the boot, the style of the skate, and things of that nature. Now where the conflict arises is where somebody's feel doesn't match the performance they need. So for example, somebody that has poor ankle strength or with a lot of younger players, they're dragging that inside skate instead of getting on the edge. And when you encounter that type of problem, you need it to be tight on the ankle because they obviously don't have that ankle strength yet, right? So there's, Ultimately, there's a line that you need to find between how do you need the boot to perform versus how do you want the skate to feel. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how I tie my skates and how I wear them and take it or leave it, it could help you down the road. Okay, so I wanted to get you up close and personal so we can go through some of the aspects, right, of tying your skate. So obviously feel is huge to me because I'm one of the last of a breed of uh, barefoot hockey players. And I wanna have the least amount of space and the most contact possible between the ice and my steel to really help me feel my inside and my outside edges, right? So that's number one. Swim at your own risk on that one. And make sure you air out your, your skates outside the locker room and outside the house for that matter. Number two, the first thing you want to do, if you see a lot of players do this before they tie their skate, what they're trying to do, it's really important that your heel gets all the way to the back of the boot and you get that heel lock so you're not moving around back there. Now I'm a wide foot, I'm a, um, the, used to be in the old Bauer skates, I used to be the double E, so now I believe it's the fit three to give me the widest amount of room in my toe, which also comes into play. What type of a skater are you? I do so many quick starts and I teach them all day that I want a really tight fit in the front. So. What I do is I start there. Now remember, you can also lace your skate, right? The standard, most popular way is to go inside, through the eyelet, and then out, right? But there are a few players I've known throughout the days, they lace theirs outside to in, right? Creating more of a winch kind of system that bites more on the eyelet that will hold 
the lace in place and get it tighter. Make sure you say that right, a winch. You don't want to say that one wrong. Okay, so back to me lacing mine up. The front, I go really tight right here in the toe. Now the next part, right, after I'm kind of passing the ball of my foot and I'm getting down into the arch area of my skate, then I wind up going really loose. Right, and I can relate, Sleeping Bob. That is the part of my skate where if I go too tight, I'll cramp up, my foot and toes will go numb. So that middle portion, I go really loose, which is, which is kind of, uh, I don't know if that's a, a, a unique way to tie skates or not, but that's how I do it. So I'm tight, and then I'm actually really loose. You can see just how much give there is in the middle when I'm lacing my skates up. But then, right at the last two, I like to be snug on the ankle. Not super tight, but I like to be pretty snug on the ankle. So back in the day, a hockey coach taught me this move. You ready for this rocket science? Don't just pull it over once, wrap it twice, and then once again, you've got a homemade winch, say it correctly, a winch, that you can pull and it will not slip during practice or a game. Voila, the Duprov Power Skate. Yeah. <laughs> Let me try that again. And voila, the Duprov Power Skating Skate Tie. Tight on the toe, loose in the middle, right on the arch area and then snug back at the ankle. This is twofold. So remember, the first part is always feel. The second part is performance. And the reason, the other reason that I go loose here is it lets me get more flex in my skate. You can see when I lean forward and I get that forward ankle flexion, which is needed for that deep knee bend, right where you wanna be for full extension and to utilize that, uh, your full potential in your quads and power out on the ice. If this was tight here, you can see my boot flexing outward in the middle. It's giving me even more of that forward ankle flexion that I prioritize at the top of my list. Okay, so that's how I tie my skate. Give that a shot, give aspects of that a try. Make sure that you're going for feel and performance. Now, depending on how old you are, and if you get old Cheers references, and the great Cliff Clavin, right, the mailman, it's a little known fact that uh, back in ancient Mesopotamia, here's a little known fact, a hockey fact, about a barefoot skater back in the day by the name of Paul Coffey. Paul Coffey was an amazing defenseman, just a dynamic skater who loved his edges. He really had the feel and performance idea down because what Paul did was he actually went up to three sizes too small with his skate, right? You always size down at least a size and a half to two sizes down. Paul Coffey went up to three sizes down so his toes were just jammed in there because he wanted to feel every ounce and every millimeter of contact on his edge work, right? So the other thing that he did was his skates were so tight. They were so tight. They had to be cut off him after every single game by the trainers because they couldn't get them undone. He had a two lace system where the bottom laces were tied right here and then he had a whole nother set that would start from the middle and lace to the top and they would be tied here. Can you imagine that? He wanted it so darn tight here that it was squeezing that he'd stop the first system here, tie them up tight and then he'd lace all the way up to the ankle and tie them yet again. Maybe that's for you. It worked for the great Paul Coffey but he was a rare breed as well. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Pro Power Skating. Sleeping Bob, that one's for you. Leave your comments down below because who knows, 
In the future, I might make a video specifically for your comment. Thanks, and I hope you have a great one.